Hello, today we're going to talk about the future value function. So future value is actually related to the PMT function, which is uh, certainly more common. So if you know the PMT function, you didn't know this, but you're going to be good at future value. But anyways, let's talk about future value. Pretend you've never seen the PMT function before. So the future value function is used to calculate the ending balance of some kind of an investment account and so this really is not a savings account sitting there just gaining interest over time it's kind of that so that idea of compounding interest but the thing that a future value helps you to figure out is a situation like this where you've got some savings account or some retirement account and you are making say monthly contributions or you're making a contribution every other month over a given period of time so you are gaining an interest rate over a time period and there's just this constant contribution getting deposited into the account so now we've spent a minute on the setup which is regrettable but i just want you to understand what we are doing and now let's talk about the function itself it is not the easiest function to set up um, but neither is pmt anyway so this i'm going to insert this function in cell b12 next to total and this is a financial formula. So it's under the formulas tab, the financial group. And what we're looking for is FV for future value. When you click on that, it opens up this pretty scary looking dialog box. But this looks exactly like PMT if that helps. So rate, you're going to want to do a reference to the cell with the rate. And your rate needs to be in percent, and it is in percent. So I'm going to click on cell B8. Now the interesting part here, since it's a monthly contribution, that means I need to take this rate and I need to divide it by 12. That's just part of how this works. I tab on down to the next dialog box. N per, that is the number of contributions I'm going to make over the life of this plan. And what that ends up being is years times 12. So you're going to want to multiply by the same number that you divided by. All right, step back. If this was some kind of a thing where, let's say that you were making weekly deposits, then these would become 52s because there's 52 weeks in a year. The 12 comes from there being 12 months in a year. The last piece of this is the PMT, that is the amount. So I click on the amount, which is B10. No magic here, that's just straight, it is what it is. I click OK, and this tells me that if I deposit $50 a month for 25 years at 4.5% interest rate, I am going to end up at uh, right that number. Doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, $27,000 and some change. And so that's mathematically a pretty difficult problem to solve with a calculator, but you can use the future value function to do it pretty easily. Thanks for watching.